Do you hear me, man of God? Awesome. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you right now for this dynamic man of God who has stepped outside of his emotions and stepped outside of his pride to intercede for his sister. We're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you will go into whatever jail cell that she is in and begin to give her peace and to show her the vision of where you're going to take her life. God, we ask that you would work with the attorneys right now and that whatever judge is going to sit her case, that that judge will begin to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit so that when this woman of God walks into the courtroom, that this judge will not see just another offender, but that this judge will see your divine will taking place. So we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that while this man of God is separated from his sister, that God, he would seek your face, that he would get into your word and that he shall hear your voice. God, we are asking this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless you, my brother. Keep your head up and just know that whatever you're dealing with, man, you can handle it. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, we should have uh, deemed tonight intercessory prayer. <laughs> so many of you all are calling. You're interceding for mothers and for fathers. You're interceding for brothers and for sisters. You're interceding for friends. Listen, I'm here to intercede for you. I need somebody to call for a prayer request so that you're able to say, God, it's me that's standing in the need of prayer on tonight. I'm not ashamed of what my habit is, cause see, I know so many of us are addicted and it's not just drugs. Some of us are addicted to pornography. Some of us are addicted to drama, hello. <laughs> Some of us are addicted to confusion. Some of us are profuse uh, liars is the best way to put this. Listen, call in on tonight. We have roughly 10 minutes left on this broadcast and I do not want this day to pass without you receiving what God has for you in your life. I was at a worship service just this past week and there was a woman of God who was supposed to come to receive the deliverance that God has for her. But because she questioned if whether or not it truly was for her, she missed an opportunity not only to be prayed for, but to have her prayers answered. Listen, don't let that be your story on tonight. I need for you to call in, send me an email, mcampbell at marcuscampbell.org. Hit me up on Facebook, Marcus Joanna Campbell, that's it. Ask me to be your friend, follow us on Facebook. My wife and I will minister to you because the anointing of God that flows upon our lives allows for us to break the hands of strongholds. I feel that right there and I'm trying to be contained. But the one thing that I hear the Spirit of the Lord telling me is that right now the hand of the enemy is being crushed on your life. And anybody that knows anything about holding on to something, whenever the bones in your hands are broken, you can no longer hold on to what you have a grip on. And because God is breaking the bones that are in, that's in the hand of the enemy, you will not be held back any longer. It's time for you to get out of your emotions. It's time to get out of the pity party and get up and start moving towards your goals, moving towards your dreams, moving towards your destiny, moving towards your vision, because God says, you can handle it. How do I know that I can handle this, Bishop? You've been saying this now all night, telling me that I can handle it. It's very simple. If God did not have the confidence in you that you could handle it, he would not have given you life as long as he has given it. And because you can hear me right now, because you're watching this broadcast, God says suicide is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Giving up on your marriage is not an option. Quitting school is not an option. I know you don't have financial aid. I know that you've taken out and maxed out your student loans, but God says if you will trust him, he will make a way for you. Don't allow your pride to stop you from asking your father to help you. Don't allow your pride to ask your mother to help you. Don't allow your pride to stop you from asking a friend to help you. God will make a way for you. Let's take our next caller. God bless you. You're on the air with us. Hello? Hey, once again, I want to say God will not put you through anything that you cannot handle. Amen. 
Thank you for confirmation, That's woman it. of God. That's all I got to say once again. Once again, God bless you, woman of God. God will not put you through anything that you cannot handle. But the relevant question is, what are you going through? Whatever it is that you're going through, my brothers and my sisters, it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel down. It's okay to feel that God has neglected you. That's okay. You're human. But the problem comes in is if you stay there. I want to tell you right now, get up. I'm telling you right now, get up. Physically stand up right where you are. Because you are sending a signal to the hell hounds that are on your track that you will not be defeated. We've had a 14 year old woman of God to call in and she's made up her mind. I will not be defeated. My mother has breast cancer. My father is abusive, but I will not be defeated. We have a man of God who is struggling, trying to hold on to his marriage. And you can hear his heart coming through the cell phone. But he's still believing God, letting the enemy know that just because I'm on the ropes does not mean that I am knocked out. Come on, you've got about seven more minutes, my brother and my sister, to call in and to let us know that you're making up your mind to handle it. That's what I want for the next seven minutes. I just want people who are willing to enter into a new covenant with God to say that I'm willing to handle it. I'm not going to move out of my house and avoid my landlord anymore. I'm not going to talk to my friends about what's going on in my life. As a matter of fact, those of you who are on Facebook, do me a favor. Stop putting your personal business out there. You are giving the enemy ammunition to further destroy you and tear you down. It's hard, brothers and sisters, to determine your enemies from your friends if they all know the same thing. <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. I want you on tonight. Somebody need to call me. At least give me three people that's going to call tonight and tell me, Bishop, I'm going to handle it. I've got diabetes, but I'm going to handle it. I may have to regulate my diet. I may have to go on insulin injections. And if you do, it's only temporary. I may not have uh, the ability to pay my car note, but I'm determined on tonight that I'm going to handle it. Job made up his mind that he was going to handle it. When he lost his children, when his wife told him, you've done something to anger God, go ahead and curse him and die. Job said these words, naked I came into this world, naked I will depart this world. The good Lord has gave it to me and the good Lord has the ability to take it away. In any regard, blessed be the name of the Lord. My brother, my sister, I want you to know on tonight that whatever you're going through is only temporary. Whatever it is that you're battling right now, it's only temporary. Man of God, you're 43 years old and you're working from sun up to sundown. Do me a favor. When your supervisor calls and asks you to work over again, politely say no, because you need to rest. Your body can only take so much. You've got to begin to take care of yourself. Because if you can't go to work, guess what? They'll get somebody else. Woman of God, it's time for you to get out of your pity party. He's gone. He's moved on with his life. He started a brand new chapter without you. It's time for you to start a chapter without him. God has a Boaz that is waiting for you to get over yourself and to seek his face. There's a child right now that you have been molested. You are afraid to tell anybody because you have been told you're going to get in trouble. Listen, I want you to call me. I'm going to be here even after we go off the air for about 10 more minutes. I want you to call don't tell me your name, but call me so that I can pray with you off camera. Nobody has the right to touch you. Your mother, your father, brother, sister, 
uncle, aunt, no one has the right to touch you in areas that are personal and private to you. And you did not do anything to warrant it. But I want you to know on tonight, you can handle this. If you step up and you acknowledge what has happened to you, and I help you go to the right people, you will never be hurt again. I'm going to pray for you. Father, we ask right now that you would touch that child. The child that has been physically, emotionally, and spiritually hurt by somebody taking advantage of them. God, we ask that you would wipe the tears from that child's eyes and remove the shame and the guilt because that child is innocent and did not do anything to deserve the punishment of sexual abuse. God, we're asking now that you would give that child courage to find the phone and to call the number that is on the screen so that that child can talk with me and so that I could help that child handle this. God, I believe you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, thank you for all who have called in on tonight. Thank you for those who've had your hope renewed, your hope restored. Thank you for being able to let others know that no matter what you're going through, God will not put you in anything that you cannot handle. I'm excited. I'm a living witness of God's power, of his grace, of his anointing, of his favor. And I want you to know that you're my brother. You're my sister. And just as God is working on my behalf, he's also working on yours right now. He has sent angels to your physical address. You're staying in a hotel temporarily. There's an angel outside your door right now. You hear the angels talking and that's just a confirmation from God to let you know that where you're staying is only temporary, that you have a permanent residence that you're going to move into. You're going to be able to pay the rent on time. You're going to be able to pay all of your utilities and you're not going to live from paycheck to paycheck. He is going to allow you to have the peace that you need and provide for your family accordingly. I'm excited on tonight. I'm excited for what God is doing. I'm excited because God never fails. I'm excited because God is awesome. But most importantly, I'm excited because you chose on tonight to not turn to NCIS, not turn to law and order, not turn to desperate housewives of Atlanta, but you decided to stay right here to hear God tell you you can handle it. I want you to touch yourself right now. Lay holy hands upon your forehead and begin to encourage yourself and say, I can handle this. Tears are rolling down your face. I can handle this. Arthritis is in your knees. I can handle this. God, now I have to take care of my grandchildren, but I can handle this. I go to church, but I'm not getting anything out of it. I can handle this. God, my wife has already filed the paperwork for divorce. I can handle this. My baby daddy won't pay child support, but I can handle this. I just found out that I have HIV. I can handle this. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to be here this time next week to be able to minister to you again. Please send me an email. Marcus Campbell, M. Campbell at MarcusCampbell.org. Go to my website, www.MarcusCampbell.org. Send me an email to let me know that you can handle this. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until next week. Hit the floor and what they can't see is your own, your own.